Hi, I'm Irene with Girl Talks Fish, and I love oddball fish. I mean, regular fish are cool and all, but who doesn't love something a little rare and unusual? Now, last year I talked about five nano oddball species I've already owned, but let's talk about some new species I've never had before and definitely want to try. If you saw my previous video, you know I love cool eeloaches. They're like these little danger noodles, miniature eels swimming around, squirming in the substrate. But what if there was a neon blue version of that that eats algae? Meet the Stephadon goby. I mean, there are many, many species in this genus, but the neon blue and cobalt blue ones, I just particularly like because my favorite color is blue. They come from Asia and Oceania from, well, some of them are from fast moving streams while others like the slow flow kind of life, but all of them are off wax grazers. So kind of like autosynclus catfish, I'm gonna feed them a similar diet of rapashi gel food, specifically the Soylent green version, probably, you know, frozen Daphnia, baby brine shrimp, canned green beans, algae wafers, that kind of thing. The males can be a little spicy and territorial toward each other. So I'll probably have to create an environment that has lots of cover and hides and maybe get more girls than boys, even though the girls are a little less colorful. African dwarf frogs. My brother actually had one when we were younger and I just remember it would jump to the top and then like slowly float down. They are a fully aquatic animal, so no need to have dry land for it. They just kind of hang around the bottom and then when they smell food, they just use their two front fin flippers, whatever hands and shovel it in their mouths. I haven't kept them yet because they're a little bit difficult to feed. They're slower eaters, so don't pair them up with your zebra danios. And also they're pretty messy eaters as well. They'll leave crumbs and leftovers everywhere. So you want some kind of sinking food that's not gonna disintegrate easily, which is most dried and prepared foods. Think, you know, frozen blood worms, frozen brine shrimp, even live white worms and grindle worms, that kind of thing. The males do sing to attract the females and they can breed in your aquarium, but most of the time the adults do eat the eggs unless you rescue them. I've never kept a filter feeding shrimp before, but they look super cool. I love crustaceans. The, I think the smallest version I could find at least was bamboo shrimp, which is still a good beefy three inch size shrimp, which surprisingly is completely peaceful and not predatory because their little front hands are feathery fans that they wave around and use to catch particles floating in the water. So to keep their food constantly in the water column, I'm gonna want decent flow in the aquarium and to feed lots of powdery foods, such as Bacter AE, Hikari First Bites is a powdery fry food. Even the powder form of Rapashi gel food would work as well. I don't know how good they are at getting every single particle. Like, are they messy eaters? So just in case, I probably would pair them up with some kind of cleanup crew members like a mono shrimp, cherry shrimp, or a mystery snail. I'm a little unsure about this one, but okay, hear me out. The anchor catfish or the Asian stone mini catfish. It is a tiny, tiny little catfish, about an inch, an inch and a quarter. And they're really cool looking because they have this wide head and these really elongated pectoral spines that stick out, giving it the anchor catfish kind of name. The only problem is they seem to really camouflage into their background. Like they're mostly bottom dwellers and they're this mottled brown, kind of gray, maybe dark olive color. And so, you know, a lot of camouflage. Like, am I going to see them a lot? I have heard though, when it's feeding time, they do this really interesting behavior where they circle their food, almost like this little mini, I don't know, <laughs> orbiting moon or tornado. And it's really interesting to watch. So, and they look really cute. Some good sinking foods would be like a, a small nano community pellet, maybe frozen Daphnia and Cyclops, live microworms, etc. And interestingly enough, they are a cold, cool water fish, so you can totally keep them in an unheated aquarium at room temperature with other peaceful nano species such as cherry shrimp, clown killifish, white cloud mountain minnows, and so on. I've never kept pencil fish before, but they are considered an oddball category just because they do have those tiny little mouths and then some of the species like to swim at a 45 degree angle. I personally like the red Beckford's pencil fish just because the males are that really cool red color and they have that black horizontal stripe going down their sides. 
Apparently they're not very shy and are pretty hardy, so they would make a good dither fish if you have some more timid creatures in the aquarium that are afraid to come out. Because of their tiny little mouths, you want to feed tiny little foods that are mostly floating or slowly sinking. So things like baby brine shrimp, we talked about, you know, frozen daphnia and cyclops, small easy fry and small fish food, all of those would work. Plus, this particular pencil fish is one of the easier species to breed, so it might be cool to make some DIY spawning mops and uh, give it a shot one day. There are many more species that I did not put on this list because I found them to be too in time, time intensive for me to care for right now in this season of my life, but let me know down in the comments if you have any more nano oddball ideas. If you're curious which oddball fish I've kept previously, check out this video and see my honest opinion of whether they're worth it or not. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.